What's up guys, Luis from Lumedia here, and today I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process of how I print onto a shirt using the DTF method. We are gonna be using an Epson 3880 paired with Acro Rip 9.0.3. The software works for me guys, let me make that clear, but I don't recommend you guys going out and looking for the specific software. I will go with Acrorip 10 or Cadlink uh, 10 as well. Those are very great softwares. And uh, the reason why I don't recommend Acrorip 9.0.3 is in one of my previous videos, I'll link it up here. So I am getting started on printing uh, this shirt for my wife. Uh, congratulations to her. She just became a kindergarten teacher. Shout out, baby. You realize your dream. Or how do you say that? You achieved your dream. Uh, so, yeah, guys. So, we're going to be printing a shirt for her today. I have Acrorip 9.0.3 open here, like mentioned before. Uh, I have already booted up the Epson 3880 behind me over here. So, you want to come over here, baby? I am going to actually run a print head clean really quick. Nothing special. All I do is, all I do guys is hit right click on Acrorip and then just kind of go down to head cleaning and hit that. I'm gonna hit yes. And we're gonna let that run. Uh, I've already done most of my initial cleaning. If you guys would like to see a more detailed clean video, click up here. I'll link it in the, in the link up there on how I maintenance my printer. All right, so one of the questions I actually get asked a lot in the forums or that people ask is why does my laptop or computer send the print file twice to my printer? And technically it is doing that, but what it's doing is it's sending a white layer and a color layer and it's doing it so that it can do it in one pass so that you don't have to like rerun the the film through the printer again because that would run the print because of the the initial rollers that grab the sheet so that's why it seems like it's sending it twice you see how it lays down this the color layer first and then it, in a second pass it does the white layer super nice and crisp Again, my printer is a little quicker than your typical L1800 or like P400, P600. And that's because I actually have four white channels, as you guys can see here. And then the four CMYK uh, channels as well. The rule of thumb is the more of these guys that you have, the quicker your print printer will be printing the white, the white layer is typically the one that takes the longest i'm going to assume don't quote me on that i just assume that so yeah like uh, i know the xp 15,000 right now is super popular but that one only has i believe one white channel or two i can't remember off the top of my head and it is pretty slow so just keep that in mind when you're purchasing a printer whether you're converting yourself or you're buying used or new or whatever it is you're you're getting you guys can see that looks good Lance, say hi to the camera. Alrighty guys, so the print is done, as you guys saw, and uh, it came out really good. So typically what you wanna do after it comes off the printer, guys, you do not wanna really mess with it. You wanna let it rest for about Everybody in the group says 10 minutes and the like in the forums and stuff like that. It's typically what they do. Uh, for the most part, I always have this guy turned on already and preheated. So this kind of cures it for me or dries the ink a little quicker, the heat press. So right now I don't have it on uh, because it's blazing hot in the house. It's Texas, so it's, it's just hot. So I'm about to turn this guy on. But I am gonna let it sit for about five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and start warming up the heat press. And then we're also gonna go ahead and start warming up the oven, the curing oven. And we're gonna start also, start setting up the most advanced piece of tech that we have in the design room, which is our powdering station. So yeah, let's get to it. 
All right, guys, so while we wait for the heat press to warm up, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the excess off the transfer. Uh, typically, I like to fill them up as much as I can, but for this one, since it's a one-off and just like a tutorial, I am gonna cut the edge off. This transfer has kind of, has rested for about, I'd say like five minutes already. So, just take that excess off and I'm gonna kind of turn it. You gotta be careful too when you're doing this because it can smear the ink or if you did if you use too much ink it'll it'll drip if you're not careful like i mentioned earlier i do put them under the heat press uh to kind of cure them a little quicker before i powder them well not cure them but dry the ink uh, before i powder it so it should be good to go we're gonna go ahead and move this over to the powdering station voila and right here, super simple guys, you're gonna take your powder, always keep it closed, do not uh, let humidity get into this. But uh, yep. go ahead, just kind of sprinkle it. Uh, I've been meaning to get a shaker because it says this works much better if you have like a, a shaker with big holes, like a Parmesan cheese sh uh, shaker or something like that, to spread it actually evenly over the image. I haven't tried it yet, but I will be trying it. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of run that powder down the image. Gonna let it kind of, you guys, you just wanna make sure you evenly coat it. Sorry of the camera, I'm being a little weird with it. But as you can see, it's pretty much there. And you're just gonna grab your transfer. I'm gonna move the powder to the end so I can see if powder's falling off of it. I'm just gonna kinda tap it on each edge. If you happen to get a if you happen to get a printer with a, a roll system and a mini shaker, it kinda does this process for you. The one thing people tell me is don't shake it so much, don't hit it so hard because it'll ruin the paint. I've never ran into that issue. Be careful where you put your fingers. And just kind of flick it from the back. And we have a transfer that is ready to be cured. Super cute. I actually got this file off of Etsy and I just edited the uh, I added my wife's last name onto there and the year 21. So let's go ahead and throw this into the oven. I've turned on the oven already. Uh, you probably can't see it from over there, but it is set at uh, between 200 to 250. So I would say 225 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And I do have it on the function mode uh, right here in the settings and the function. And I set it for like 30 minutes just so it can heat up and, and stuff like that. So uh yeah the time doesn't matter uh i'm gonna show you what i do to know when the prints are done i sometimes i time it sometimes i don't it just depends if i have my phone around me or not which right now i don't see it so uh typically you want them oh, excuse me to be in there from two minutes two to three minutes at least that's what i've seen that works very well uh you also see like fumes coming out this is why i haven't really been running my dto setup a lot in the house because the fumes are very toxic guys be very very careful with these fumes <coughs> have some type of ventilation out to the window uh, i'm gonna probably do a video on a diy ventilation system but yeah just be careful guys or have like a a uh what is it, an air filter um an air purifier right next to it so it can suck it into the filter and kind of kill that out so yeah it's the only big tip on this this part so i think it's heated up enough already we're just gonna go ahead and grab this guy and we're gonna put it in here all right guys so in it goes make sure it's good all right guys you see all this smoke coming out like i mean it's crazy the bigger the print the more smoke you're gonna have 
Uh, I'm gonna open it real quick to look at the print. Uh, it looks like this one's ready. Yep, it is. I'm gonna pull it out. That was quick. That was very fast. I mean, I'm talking about maybe 30 seconds, maybe. I think it's a little too hot because it's getting preheated. Um, but I think I was able to pull it out in time. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this guy off because it gets very hot. Um, all right, so it wasn't a little bit too long. As you guys can see, the, the film has gotten kind of scrunched and you have a little bit of like humidity on the other side. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it over there. But like right here. You guys can probably see like the little dots. That means it is no bueno. I did burn the print. Um, I've noticed with this um, oven, let it warm up for a while. I had literally just turned it on, so I guess it was flash uh, heating up. Let it run like for five to six minutes before you stick a transfer in there. Uh, because at that point, I'm guessing it's trying to set its temperature. It's, it, so, But I think I'm still gonna press this. Um, I have pressed prints like this in the past and they've been fine. Um, I don't think my wife has an issue with it because I can make her one whenever. And you still get that really uh, nice, well, you have pinholes. That's kind of how you tell uh, if a print is bad. You see some of those little pinholes in there. But I've actually pressed a shirt of mine that I, when I was practicing and it's still holding up just fine. So. We'll actually press this guy and then we'll do a wash test on it later. So don't do this guys. Your film has to be nice and sleek. Uh, I'll show you one that's a perfect print actually. So you see this guy, it's nice. It's not overly, it's not wrinkled or anything like that. That's how you want it to look like. Okay, so I don't, it's really hard to get on the camera, guys, but it looks like elephant skin. Like, it looks very uh, texture, rubbery, white material. So don't move it. I'm gonna, so I at least did achieve that with my print, even though it was a little bit, it was in there a little bit too long. Uh, you can see the elephant print on it. So we're gonna hope for the best and hope that this guy holds up. But uh, again, I do not suggest selling this to somebody or doing it on a customer's print. This is a bad print, guys. All right, guys, so this is literally the last part. We're gonna take the transfer and we're going to place it on the shirt. Now, remember, this is a bad print, so I'm not expecting it to be amazing, but I still think it's gonna come out really good. Uh, remember guys, I show you guys the good and the bad on this channel. I don't ever hide anything. All right guys, and it is at 162 Fahrenheit um, for 12 seconds, I believe I have it set, so we'll see. Open this guy. And I typically use my ruler as like a heat conductor to kind of try to get it to. So the reason I went with going ahead and pressing the spring guys, is because I do want you guys to see that there is a buffer. DTF does give you a, uh, a buffer of like, you know, good versus bad. I have pressed some very bad shirts uh, and I'll show you those and they're still fine. I mean, I haven't had any issues with it unsticking. It is starting to crack a little bit, but I'm telling you, I'm talking about, I've wore the shirt probably every week for the past half a year since I started DTF. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and feel this guy still too, still too, um, too warm, but. Remember, this print was not an ideal print. So I do gotta be a little more careful when I'm uh, peeling this off. But actually, it's very easy. No issues, nothing's peeling up. Looking good. All right, let me get um, a parchment sheet and we're gonna go ahead and do the final press. All right, guys, put our parchment paper over it. 
put it upside down and do another eh, 10 seconds or so just for the final seal uh, you'll probably sometimes see smoke coming out from the side of the heat press that's kind of releasing more humidity and that's ready I'll lift this guy up nice and vibrant print Hopefully it came out good on the ship. So there it is guys. So really the only issues that I see that are pretty big on the pencil mark right here on the black. There's like a little bit of discoloration right there from humidity I'm going to assume from overcooking it. Is it humidity or overcooking it? I don't know if you can see it guys, but it's right there. We're going to do the stretch test. Ready? So, I mean, I don't want to stre overly stretch it because my wife is going to be wearing this, but no cracking. Good to go. Alrighty, guys. That's about it. I mean, that's a DTF printed shirt, even with a bad transfer, as you guys saw. It looks great and uh, I have no doubt in my mind that this is gonna hold up a lot of lot of washes I'd have no doubt in my mind that this is gonna last my wife the whole school year so yeah hey guys thank you so much for tuning in for today's video I hope that my step-by-step -step process to DTF kind of gives you an idea if this is a printing method that you would use for your day-to-day -day business. As always guys, please remember if you are interested in purchasing any uh, things I use today or you're interested in getting to DTF, I will have links in the description below. They are affiliate links, uh, disclaimer. <laughs> but uh, if you guys use it, I do get a little bit of a kickback without you guys having to pay anything extra. It just helps the channel out and I would really appreciate it if you guys would use those links. In addition, guys, don't forget to join the brand new Discord channel that I launched for Loom Media. We already have some members kind of chiming in there and starting to have discussions about DTF printing, sublimation, vinyl cutting, anything in the print world. Uh, soon we will start talking about print brokering and things of that nature. But if you'd like to join that Discord, it's totally free. It gives you direct access uh, to me and to a bunch of other very knowledgeable people so the link for that will be in the description below as well again guys thank you so much for watching and like always i'll see you on the next one